My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We begin this series from the third edition, third edition yesterday, and today is our day number two, lesson number two. On the blackboard it says day 3002, 3 indicates the third edition. Let's get going. We are on page number 19. On page number 19, please turn to it. Page number 119 rather. On page 119, at the very bottom you will see a problem there. Which looks something like this. It's a quantitative comparison question. In the first column, we are given x squared plus 1. In the second column, we are given 2x minus 1. Let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do here. We have 2x x squared plus 1, we have 2x minus 1. If we can somehow bring this 2x here, we will get our x squared plus 2x plus 1. We'll have a complete square. x squared, subtract the 2x from here, bring it on this side, plus 2x plus 1. Voila. We subtract it from here, move it here. x squared plus 2x plus 1, we know is x plus 1, whole squared. And what are we left with on this side? On this side, on this side we just left with negative 1. And that's how simple it is. That's it. We are done. What we have to understand now is that this quantity, because it is being squared, is always positive. And this quantity is negative 1. It's a negative quantity. Of course, positive is going to be more than negative. The answer is A. This was one way of doing it. This is how the book explains the, explains the problem. Here is another way of doing it. Here is. There is a different way of doing this. I, I, I'm not going to continue the bottom here. I'm going to erase this and, and, and start again. Here's another approach. What we just did here is there is nothing wrong with it. It's perfectly fine. But here's another perspective. 2x minus 1. Let's subtract 1 from this side. Okay, let's subtract, let's subtract one from uh, from both columns. I shouldn't say this side. We cannot go around subtracting one from just one side. Let's subtract one from both columns. One goes away and we end up with x squared versus 2x minus 2. With me so far? Take out take out 2 common rather, not x. 2 is a common factor. Take it out and we end up with x minus 1. And from this point on, we have to simply understand where we have x squared. When x is equal to 0, when x is equal to 0, when x is equal to 0, this column is going to be 0, this column is going to be 0 minus negative 1, it's going to be negative. Well, we don't have to do this much work. When x is 0, when x is 0, when we put in 0 here, this is a negative quantity. This is 0. Answer is A so far. The answer is A so far. What happens if x is 1? If x is 1, 1 squared is going to be 1, it's going to be positive quantity, or we don't have to make it so complicated, 1 square is just 1, and when x is 0, 0 minus 1 is 0, this is going to be 0. Now it switches, now it switches, before it was, before it was A, now it's B, therefore, of course, the answer is going to be D, the answer is going to be D. Do you understand? Let's get, let's carry on then. If I stand here, I'm going to keep making fuss about it. We have to progress. On the next prob on the next page, on page 120, if you turn to page 120, problem number nine. On problem nine, on page 120, we have seven w minus four. This is our column A, and in column B, we have two w plus five. And we are told that W is more than 1. We have to keep that in mind. We are given between the two columns, we have we are given the information that W has to be more than 1. Let's see what we can do here. Let's bring all the W's on one side, bring the constant to the other side, subtract 2W from both columns, and add 4 to both columns. When you do that, 4's are going to drop out. 7W minus 2W is going to be 5W. And here we're going to have 2W, two w goes away, and we end up with 9. Divide both sides by 5, and W versus 9 fifth. 
w versus 9 fifth. What can we do with it? Well, what we can do with it is that we are told w is more than 1 and that is all we are told. w is more than 1 and that is all we are told. So if you put in something more than 1 here, if you put in 6 ninth, 6 fifth rather, that's more than 1, 6 fifth is more than 1, w is more than 1, 6 fifth is more than 1, 6 fifth versus 9 fifth, the answer is b. Well, what happens if w happens to be 9 fifth? If w happens to be 9 fifth, which of course is more than 1, in which case the answer will be c. At this point you can stop, you already have conflicting answer, the answer is d. But just, just for the sake of it, what happens if w is 10 fifth? If w is 10 fifth, the answer will turn to a. The answer is d. The answer is d. Simply knowing that w is more than 1 is not going to help us establish how it compares to 9 fifth. It's more than 1, maybe it's 6 fifth, maybe it's 9 fifth, maybe it's 10 fifth, maybe it's a thousand fifth, fifth of a thousand, who knows? Let's go one more, let's do the next one, number, number 10. There is no number 10, we move on to page number, we move on to page number 122. Yep, page number 122. Page number 122, we are on number 1. It says, or oh, this is too silly, 5x plus 32 is equal to 4 minus 2x. I feel absolutely silly to even spend time on it. Let's add 2x to both sides. This is absolutely silly. Subtract 32 from both sides. This 2x is going to go away, 32 is going to go away. 4 minus 32 is going to be negative 28. And here we have 3x. What is the question asking for? Do we have 3x? Oh no, we are adding them. We have 7x, which is just as well because we have 28 here, negative 28. Divide by 7 and we find that x is equal to negative 4. And that is all. It's a very simple linear equation divide us to solve x equals negative 4. So the next one, number 2. On the same page, question number 2 on the same page. It says which point is the farthest from 1. Which point is farthest from 1. Which of the following number is farthest from 1 on the number line. The first one to give us is negative 10. Well, let's put it here. From 1. So here is our 0. And here is our point of reference. 1. We are going to put this on the top. Here is the negative 10, that is going to go there. The next one they give us is negative 5. Negative 5 is going to be somewhere here. Now, negative 10, negative 10 is 11 points, 11 points away from 1. So, 5 is already out of the running. 5 is already out of the running. Then we have, then we have 0. Then we have zero. Oh, zero is right here. There's only one. This one point of it. Zero is zero is not. That's that's not the right answer. So far, this guy is winning. And then we have five. Five is going to be enough somewhere here. And five is only four points away. This is also a silly question. Five is only four points away from positive one. Unless I misread it, it says which of the following numbers is farthest from one on the number? Yeah, we are comparing with one. This is our point of reference. Let's put it in a different color. So we started with negative 10 and so far negative 10 is the winner. Negative 10 is the winner because 5 is only 4 units away, one, uh, 0 was only 1 unit away, negative 5 was only 6 units away, negative 5 from, from 1 is, was to, from negative 5, negative 5 to 1 would have been only 6 units away. So, so far negative 10 is the winner. Let's keep on going. That was 5 and then we have 10. 10. Now some people in, in, their, in their rush might not realize that just because positive 10 is the biggest number there, but it is not the one that is farthest away from 1, because 10 from 1 is only 9 units away. 10 from 1, from positive 1 to positive 10, is only 9 units away. Or else, from positive 1 to negative 10, it's, 11, it's a distance of 11 units. The answer is negative 10. A is the winner. The winner is A. The winner is A. Let's move on to the next problem.
Next problem on page number 123, number 3. And number three, they give us a graph, fx is equal to the absolute value of 2x, and then 4 is outside. 4 is outside. And they even tell you what the graph looks like, which of course makes perfect sense, because if you were to plot it, I'm going to first plot it and then we're going to do it freehand. Actually, we don't. When x is 0, when x is 0, y is going to be 4. That's your y intercepts. 1, 2, 3, 4. It starts here. It starts here. When x is when x is positive 1 or negative 1, positive 1 or negative 1, it's going to be either positive 2 or negative 2. 2 plus 4 is 6. So when x is negative 1 or positive 1, it goes to 6. And similarly, when x is equal to positive 2 or negative 2, positive, when x is positive 2 or negative 2, it's going to be 4, positive 4 or negative 4. When you take the absolute value of it, it's just 4. 4 plus 4 is going to give you 8. It, it goes up by 2 because 2 is the two is the slope. So we have 4, 6, 7 and 8 somewhere here. Somewhere there. But not, not the same part, obviously. Somewhere there. And it looks something like this with a slope of 2 with the slope of 2. And the question is, the five graphs that they give us, five uh, equations that they give us, five functions that they give us, which one of those five functions will, will intersect with this graph? Let's take a look, shall we? So now we're just going to draw it freehand. We're just going to draw it freehand. Now that we understand the shape, let's draw it freehand and see what happens, okay? Understand. We're looking for something that's going to intersect with this graph. Let's put this, let's put this in red because that's our point of reference. I'll just leave it to black. We're going to do the work with red. Okay. There are only three possibilities. There are only three scenarios. Listen very carefully. There are only three scenarios where a given graph, a linear graph that is, they're all linear, uh, because they, keep, they want to keep it simple, will intersect with this graph. Do you know what those three possibilities are? One possibility is, listen very carefully, one possibility is, we have, this is 4, we have a 4. We have something maybe whose intercept is very high up there and has a very steep negative slope. That's one possibility. This one has a slope of 2. This one has a slope of 2. We already saw that. I erased it, but we already saw that it has a slope of 2. It says, this graph that we plotted here, the equation is y is equal to absolute value of 2x plus 4. This is your slope. It has a slope of 2. So that's one possibility. We have something that has a very high, very high y-intercept, something much more than 4, but has a very steep negative slope. It's going to intersect here. It will going to intersect here. Another possibility is that it has, it has, a, it has a something more than 4, but it doesn't have a negative slope, it has a positive slope. I shouldn't have brought this blue line here. But it goes something like this. Or it just, it's just a fluke that they both happen to intersect the same point. You understand? That was not by design. That was not by design. And if it's going to bother you, you can redo it without, without explaining so much, okay? I'm, I'm explaining too much here. Here's the situation. Here's the graph that is given to us. One possibility is that something that starts out very high and has a negative slope, it, it's going to intersect here. Another one is that something that has a that uh, that has a y intercept of more than four, but it is shallow. But it is shallow. Its slope is less than two. The slope of this line is less than two because slope of the blue line, the slope of the blue line is two. This slope was is negative. And slope of the Slope of the red line, slope of the red line is something less than 2. So one more time, the line that is given to us has a slope of this blue line here. It 
has a slope of 2. If it has a slope of 2, one way a line can intersect is that it starts way up here and comes down with a negative slope. It has an intercept of more than 4 or it has an intercept of more than 4 but the slope is less than 2. If the slope is less than 2, eventually they are going to intersect. Eventually they are going to intersect. Oh, this is getting frustrating because I don't want to redo this video. I want to finish this thing here. Okay. There. This is what we are talking about. You see, they are going to intersect here. This line that you just plotted, let's call it L2. L1 is what is given to us. L2 has a slope of less than 2. This one, L1, which is given to us, has a slope of 2. And the third possibility, and the third possibility is that, third possibility is that, it has a negative intercept, it has a negative intercept, and has a slope of more than 2. It's going to intersect right here. Do you understand? But the one thing that can never happen, one thing that can never happen is, if the line has the same slope as this line, if it has a slope of 2, if it has a slope of 2, it will never intersect. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter where the intercept is, this, this is the line that is given to us, let me put it in the darker color here, right here. So if we have another one, if they are parallel, if they are parallel, it doesn't matter whether it has a negative intercept or whether it has a positive intercept, as long as they are parallel, as long as they are parallel, they will never intercept, never intersect each other of course, because they have the same slope. Let's start with that, shall we? Let's start, let's, let's see if there, is, uh, if there are any answer choices that have the same slope, because that's not possible. That's not possible. That's just silly. So here is what is given to us. y is equal to 2x plus 4, absolute value of 2x. A says g of x is equal to x minus 1. As you can see, x minus 2 rather, it has a slope of 1. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for something that has a slope of 2, if there is anything. Next one is g x plus 3. That's also has a slope of 1. That's not what we're looking for. C says g of x is equal to 2x minus 2. Well, there you go. It has a slope of 2. It has, a, it has an intercept of negative 2. It has an intercept of negative 2. But it has a slope of... Oh, sorry, right here. It has an intercept of negative 2. It has an intercept of negative 2, but it is parallel to what is given to us. It has the same slope. It will never intersect it. It, is, it will never intersect this. They have the same slope. They have the same slope. Let's look at D. D says G of X is equal to 2X plus 3. Oh, another one. Another one with the same slope. Slope of 2. A slope of 2. But this time, one, two, three, four, this is where we are. This one we crossed out. Answer choice, answer choice C was gone, but because it starts with negative two, it has starts with negative two, but it has the same slope. These are parallel. If they are parallel, this is answer choice C. They will never intersect. It just goes on forever and will never intersect it. C will never intersect it. Same thing with D. It has a positive slope, a positive intercept. One, two, three. It has, it has a slope of here and it goes going to go something like this. It's always parallel and it will never intersect. That's your answer choice D. Let's look at answer choice E. E says, E says 3x three 3x three minus 2. Let's start look at answer choice D right now. Let's look at A and B. It has a slope of 1 and it starts with negative 2. It starts with negative 2. It starts with negative 2 right here. Same, same, same place as this one. They have the same intercept, just negative 2 and negative 2. But it has a slope of only 1. So instead of being parallel, this line, last choice A, is, is going to be even shallower. It's just going to keep on going like this because it has, it has, it is shallower. It has slope of only one. Slope of this equation is only one. This is your answer choice A. 
As you can see, this line will never intersect the given line. The given line is this line right here. This is what we are interested in. This is the equation. This, this, this is the function we are looking at. As you can see, A starts here and it's going to get farther and farther and farther apart as we go out. Same thing here. But that here it doesn't even matter because this is going this is this 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 one has has a negative slope, this this one has a positive slope, you don't need to worry about it, but here they're gonna get farther and farther apart. What about B? Same exact thing. It starts with three. One, two, three. Oh, same as same as this guy. There must have been oh there is three and there is three right here. The same as that guy, but again with a slope of one. So it's gonna be shallower. This is you this is your line D. It has a slope of This is your line B rather. It has a slope of only one. It didn't. It doesn't look very nice, does it? Let me do it freehand. Because when you do it bits and pieces, it doesn't come out very nice. As you can see, they're going farther and farther apart because this one has a slope of two, and this one has a slope of only one. The only answer choice that works is E. Why E? Because even though it starts at negative two. It starts at negative two, just like this one and this one. Sorry, just like this one and this one and this one. They give you three answer choices with a negative two. But what happens? What happens is that it starts with negative two, but it has a slope of three. So every time x goes up by one, y goes up by two for the original function. But in here, every time x goes up by one, the value of the y goes up by three. So eventually, it's going to catch up. Where it's going to catch up, you're not going to worry about it, but it starts here, and because it's steeper, because it's steeper, it's going to intersect somewhere. This line has a slope of 3, and that's your answer choice E, and that's the correct answer. A did not work, B did not work, C did not work, D did not work. I think I spent way too much time on it. I think I'm going to end it here. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.